During the process of designing an accurate scale model of the Titanic, inevitably the question will arise of how much that model should weigh. This seems like a fairly straightforward question at first. Just reference how much the real Titanic weighed based on its registration, and you should be able to get that answer. And in fact, Titanic's registration actually listed very accurately how much the gross tonnage was. You can see here that Titanic's registration showed precisely 46,328.54 tons, making it at the time the largest ship in the world. Now this is a very accurate number, so all we have to do is divide it by the scale cubed and we'll get how much our model should weigh. However, anyone who's ever worked with tonnage knows that the definition of tonnage can vary depending on who's saying it. Now the definition of tonnage and Titanic registration isn't actually listed on there, so we have to find this answer somewhere else. Now it turns out on Titanic's registration, gross register tonnage actually refers to the usable internal enclosed volume of a ship where 100 cubic feet equals one gross register ton. Okay, that's not exactly what I was looking for. I was looking for a definition of this many pounds equals one gross register ton, but we can still figure that out based on this definition of 100 cubic feet. And it turns out 100 cubic feet of seawater that Titanic would be displacing would be precisely 6,392 pounds, which uh, turns out to be about 296 million pounds altogether on Titanic. Now this seems a little high to me. In fact, it seems about three times higher than, than the number should be uh, for tonnage. So I did a bit more digging here and found that gross register tonnage is actually something carried over from medieval ship taxation. Essentially, back in the medieval day, it was very hard to determine how big a ship really was. For example, a ship could be very long and thin and not have very much cargo capacity, or could be very fat and short and have a huge cargo capacity. Therefore, you can't rely on length of the ship by itself. So what they decided to do was measure ships based on how many barrels of wine they could hold. The idea being that each cask of wine was like a ton of weight. So if your ship could carry 100 barrels of wine, your ship had a gross register tonnage of 100 tons. Okay, so what does this mean for us? Essentially what this means is that gross register tonnage has actually nothing to do with the weight of the ship. What we really care about is the displacement of Titanic itself. Now this information isn't listed on Titanic's registration, but it is mentioned multiple times after the sinking of the Titanic to be about 52,310 tons. This number actually comes from the senior most surviving architect of the Titanic who stated during the Titanic wreck inquiries that Titanic displaced precisely 52,310 tons. Fantastic. The, here's a number that actually relates to weight. Now all we need to do is to determine which type of ton he was referring to. For example, this measurement could have been in short tons, also known as the U.S. ton, which is about 2,000 pounds. It also could have been the long ton, also known as the British ton, which is about 2,240 pounds. And it also could have been the metric ton, also known as the megagram or 1,000 kilograms, which is approximately 2,204.6 pounds per ton. Now, as you probably could guess, Titanic, being a British ocean liner in the early 20th century, we used the British long ton. What this means is that Titanic would have displaced approximately 117 million pounds at the waterline, which is drafting 34 feet 7 inches above the keel. Now, while this answer is very precise and it gives us a unit that we can actually work with, it unfortunately isn't the correct answer. The Titanic, like all ships, is not a static ship, however. It varies in how much it weighs from day to day, depending on how many people are on board, depending on how much cargo is on board, and depending on how much fuel is on board. Titanic's weight can vary by over 6,000 tons, depending on how much coal is still on board the ship and how far it is along the voyage. And we know that Titanic had about 300 tons in each of its 22 coal bunkers, totaling a maximum of 6,611 tons. And we also know that Titanic, at full steam, ahead would have burned 35 tons of coal per hour. Now, the night of April 14th, right before the Titanic hit the iceberg, is about 108 hours into its voyage. So subtract a few hours for stopping at Cherbourg, subtract uh, a little bit because it wasn't going at full speed during the entire voyage, and I estimate the Titanic would have been down at least 3,400 tons of coal on the night of April 14th, which means the ship should weigh on coal alone 
less than 48,900 tons. Now speaking of coal, as some of you may know, Titanic had a fire on board its maiden voyage. And to visualize where that fire was, I have here the tank top section of the Titanic showing specifically boiler room 4, 5, and 6 with the bow off to the right here. And the fire was in the forward starboard bunker in boiler room number 5 down here you can see. On the afternoon of April 14th, this coal fire was put out. And the only way they could have done that is by completely emptying this coal bunker, which means that on the night of April 14th, we would have had a condition where the port bunker would have been nearly full of coal, the starboard bunker would have been empty of coal, and the rest of the bunkers on board the ship would have been about half full. And so what this means is, on board Titanic, there would have been approximately 3,200 tons of coal on board with about 1,400 tons on the starboard side and about 1,700 tons on the port side. Now all this to say, in addition to the Titanic being less than 48,900 tons based on coal alone, we also have a discrepancy of how much weight is on the starboard side and the port side. Now to really understand how much Titanic would have weighed on the night of April 14th, we can't just rely on coal. After all, the Titanic wasn't at full capacity when it left on its maiden voyage. So what we can do is we can figure out how much the Titanic would have weighed based on how much it was drafting when it left the port and how much coal it used up. And luckily, I'm not the only one who had this question. In fact, during the British wreck inquiry, Edward Wilding was called on a stand and asked how exactly how much Titanic would have displaced. So by using information that he had gathered on similar voyage with the identical RMS Olympic, Edward Wilding estimated to the nearest inch the Titanic would have been drafting approximately 33 feet 9 inches at the rudder and 30 feet 9 inches at the bow. And yes, this means the Titanic would have been trimmed at a slightly up angle. And he was able to calculate based on the original plans for the ship, how much water it would have had to displace to have this exact draft, which is approximately 48,284 long tons, which is 108 million pounds. So there it is, guys. There's the answer of how much Titanic weighed on the night of April 14th, right before it struck the iceberg. Now that we have a number that we can rely on, let's plug this number into our equation to see exactly how much our model should weigh. 48,284 long tons divided by 350 scale to the cubed power is approximately 2 pounds 8.4 ounces, or 1,144 grams. Now, while this number tells us exactly what our model should weigh at this scale, we actually need to account for the fact that the model is going to be floating in fresh water, not salt water. Salt water being denser than fresh water means that the model should actually weigh even less than this. And so, let's do the conversion real quick. Uh, fresh water is about exactly one gram per centimeter cubed. Uh, salt water is about 1.025 uh, grams on average per centimeter cubed. So we do this equation uh, and we get 2 pounds, 7.4 ounces, or exactly 1,116 grams. And that is how much our model should weigh at this scale. Now, while this number is absolutely key to figuring out how much my model should weigh, it's actually only about half the answer when it comes to figuring out the weight of the model. For example, on the night of April 14th, we know that the ship was trimmed about 0.20 degrees aft based on the discrepancy of how much it drafted in the bow versus the stern. It also had a list to port that night due to the discrepancy of how much coal there was on the port side and the starboard side. Now I put a question mark here because I do have to mention that we don't know for sure if Titanic used its ballast tanks to compensate for this list. I'm going to assume for my model that they did not use their ballast tanks to compensate for the list and that this is the discrepancy of how much it weighed from one side to the other. Now I also need to know where the center of gravity of the Titanic was. I had major issues on my version 5 and my version 6 models that I built of the center of gravity being much too high and so the ship wouldn't float properly. Now luckily, a guy named Samuel Halpern has already done an analysis based on the same 48,300 ton estimate from Edward Wilding. And the math he did showed that on the night of April 14th, Titanic's center of gravity would have been approximately 35 feet 8 inches above the keel and about 10 feet aft of the midship. 
Now, if we put all this together, what this means is that my 1,350 scale model of the Titanic should weigh approximately 2 pounds, 7.4 ounces in fresh water, or 1,116 grams. It should have a draft of 1.157 inches at the rear and 1.054 inches at the front. And it should have a center of gravity approximately 1.223 inches above the keel. The trim is going to be 0.20 degrees aft, and the list is going to be about 2 degrees to port is what I'm expecting. Now you might be asking, how am I going to control this? Am I going to take the model and very carefully hold it approximately 1.223 inches above the keel and see if it's balanced? Well, the good news is I don't have to do that necessarily. My 3D modeling software allows me to analyze exactly where the center of gravity is, assuming I know what the density of the plastic is that I'm going to be 3D printing this with and how heavy all the ballast weights are. And you can see here where I put the ballast weights on my version 5 and version 6 model. This was very successful, and so I'm going to be doing something similar with the next model, but I'm going to be using some different weights. For example, I'm going to be using a 1 8 ounce fishing weight to simulate the weight of all the coal. And at 1 350 scale, an eighth ounce is equivalent to 149.5 tons, or about half of what the weight of the coal should have been in every single bunker. So if I put 10 of these on the starboard and 12 of these on the port, I can simulate a total of 3,290 tons of coal. I'm also going to be using a half ounce wheel balance weight to simulate the bulk weight of the ship. And at 1 through 50 scale, a half ounce is equivalent to about 600 tons. This gives me a lot of control over the CG because these are fairly flat weights, and so I can put them all the way at the bottom of the model, or I can raise them up a bit if I need to. Now to visualize what that's going to look like, I have here my preliminary assembly of where all these weights are going to be stacked. And you can see here that in boiler room number 5, I have two fishing weights on the forward port side simulating a full 300 ton bunker and no fishing weights on the starboard side simulating an empty bunker. Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you have any questions, please comment down below. Let me know if you like the video and if there's any other questions you'd specifically like me to dive into in the future. The next video I'm going to be pushing out is, for example, going to be specifically talking about how big the gash was on the Titanic and how I'm going to be simulating that on my model. Thank you for watching. Bye.